Hi everyone, my name is Linda and I'm coming to you from um, Be So Creative in Las Cruces, New Mexico and I'm going to be doing today's tips and tricks. Today we are going to be talking about batting. Um, I chose this topic because I knew absolutely nothing about batting and I decided it was time to learn. Um, so I used this sample card that we have in the shop. It gives all the various types of batting and we have a smaller one but most of my information came from this book called know your batting and that these are this book is available here in at be so creative sorry about that book stand up okay there we go all right so a little bit about the history of batting batting has been around a long time and it was always a very labor-intensive process to make batting. Batting was usually made by hand, and it was made either by the family or by the slaves owned by the family. As time went on, uh, we, the people started substituting old clothing and um, blankets for batting. I have an old quilt at home that actually has a blanket as the batting in it. There are many options for um, different types of batting, one being cotton, which is probably the most popular, and cotton blends, and there's polyester. Then we have wool, bamboo, and silk. A lot of people ask, what is the best um, batting to use for your project? Well, there are several things you should consider when you're choosing a batting. Don't be like me and just go to the quilter and say, oh, whatever. Just put whatever you want to put in. So there are things you need to consider. Um, first thing to consider is what is your project? Is it a bed? Is it a wall hanging? Is it a table? Um, table setting? Is it a bag? Or is it a garment? And depending on what you're using, um, what you're making, then you choose your batting from there. How often are you going to wa wash it? Is it going to be washed once a year, once a season? It just depends. It depends on what you, how often you like to wand launder things. Like if it was a table setting, you'd probably want to wash it, I don't know, after dinner. So depending on how many times you want it. Then you have to consider, do you want something with warmth? or do you want something cooler? Like here in Las Cruces, we would want something a little cooler. If you lived up in Montana, you'd probably want something a little warmer. Um, do you want it puffy or do you want it thin? So um, do you want natural fiber or do you want a synthetic? How are you quilting this? Are you machine quilting it? Are you hand quilting it or are you tying it? So those are the different things that you need to consider. Um, another thing that you could, might be important to you is if you're using 100% cotton, a lot of times they say to use a cotton batting. So, but that's your decision. Okay, let's talk about the different types of battings. Probably the most popular is the cotton. And we have cotton batting here at the shop. And it's a natural fiber and it is um, breathable and it can be cool or it can be warm. It's soft and comfy and as used for traditional and heirloom quilts um, and the more you wash it, the more you use it, it becomes softer with age. It's dense and it's flat. There's no pre-washing involved with this. It has a minimal shrinkage However, there are some disadvantages of using cotton. It does not drape well. It's heavier and denser than others, and it's too dense for beginning hand quilters. The next one would be a cotton blend. We didn't have any cotton blend here at the shop, but a cotton blend is usually 80% cotton and 20% polyester, and it's usually been blended with wool or with bamboo. <clears throat> it's breathable because it's blended with the natural fibers. It, again, this is a product that is good with, for either cool climates or uh, warm climates. It's a little fluffier. 
It drapes nicely and is stable. It's very popular with bed quilts. It works well for machine and hand quilting. The disadvantage of a cotton blend is that it is um, not 100% natural fiber and it has a 3 to 5% shrinkage. And depending on the brand, it could bead. Silk is a great summer weight batting. It's washable if you wash it in cool water in a delicate cycle. It's soft, it drapes nicely. However, again, silk does shrink. 3 to 5% and it is a little more expensive. One of the main disadvantages with silk is that it's an off-white color. So if you have a white background, it might change the color of your background. Another um, type of batting is bamboo. Bamboo is natural and has antibacterial qualities, which makes it an interesting type of thing to use for your batting. Most bamboo battings are 50% bamboo and then blended with either um, cotton or other natural fibers. It's breathable. It has a soft loft. It may be, may be machine washed and dried, which is always nice in my world. It's good for hand and machine quilting and it's great for warmth and lightweight. It's a great summer weight also. Again, this fabric this batting shrinks 2 to 3 percent. It's an off-white color, so it may change the color of the background of your fabric. Wool is another popular batting. It's lightweight and yet warm, which is really nice. Um, it's comfortable and it's breathable because it is a natural product. It has a little bit higher loft, so it's a little puffier. It's one of the fluffiest quilts, makes one of the um, fluffiest quilts using a natural fiber. It's perfect for bed quilts. It has a nice drape. It's the warmest of the batting fibers, so this would be really good if you lived in a cooler climate. Um, it absorbs moisture and is very breathable. Wool is a great batting if you live in a cool, damp climate. This can be layered with other battings to add definition, um, and that would be done for show quilts. Some wool batting is machine washable and dryable, but you always need to read the manufacturer's instructions, and you can see on this package, right, whoops, wait a second, let me see if I can get this going right. It says, may be machine washed and dried, little to no shrinking, using cool water and a cool dryer. So, pre-washing is not required. Some wool battings, they say to um, machine wash, but don't dry it completely. Just dry it, fluff it, and then lay it flat to dry. Well, this would be hard if you used your wool batting on a... Um, bed quilt because I don't know about you but I don't have the room in my house to put a bed quilt um, down on the floor. I don't have that kind of room but it'd be great for a smaller project where you could actually lay it out. Then of course there's the polyester and, and be so creative we have several polyesters. We have the normal white polyester plus polyester also comes in black And then we have the puffy polyester, so you can see it actually puffs. So this makes a real puffy quilt. The poly polyester is synthetic and it holds its shape. It has the highest loft batting and it varies from batting to batting. This is perfect for baby quilts and for play mats. Like I said, it comes in black and white and it's not a heavy fabric, so it's lightweight and yet it gives you the warmth. It's breathable and comfortable. The nice thing about polyester is that it's mold and mildew resistant. So that's a good plus for that. It's machine washable and dryable. It doesn't shrink very much. 
Um, it's less expensive than the natural fibers. The interesting thing about this, because this um, polyester is good for hand, hand quilting, machine quilting, and for tying. And the nice thing about this one, your stitches can be up to 10 inches apart, so when you're actually tying a quilt, you can spread your ties out a little further, which is great. And it says on the package, great for tied quilts, which is awesome. The disadvantage, though, for the polyester quilt is it's not a natural fiber, and high heat can melt the polyester. And again, it may bead, depending on the brand. The last type of um, batting we're going to talk about is the fusible. This is fusible fleece. In fact, I just used this when I made a, a purse the, uh, this weekend. And it's, um, has, it's fusible on one side. And these can be either fusible on one side or on um, both sides. They're great for small, pack, pack, small projects such as purses and table products. Um, it's, a lot of them are uh, water soluble and wash away in the first laundering. There are two main fibers, um, two main fibers, polyester and cotton. Like I say, machine washable and dryable. It is good for machine and hand quilting. And it, this too can be tied. Um, the tying on this, you want it uh, no farther apart than eight inches. The disadvantage is it's not good for hand quilting. It's harder on large pieces. And um, some of them are made with glue or resin, which is not a natural product. The final type of batting, which I never knew anything about, is that um, Quilter's Dream actually has a batting that is made from 100% recyclable um, plastics, which I thought was really interesting. It's machine washable and dryable, it has minimal shrinkage, and it can be quilted or tied up to 10 inches apart. The other important piece of information I want to give you is that it was recommended in the material I read, and I thought it was a great idea, that you put a, a care label on your product or your project. You know, is, if the um, quilt has got wool, you need to make sure they know it's machine washable and dryable, it's not machine washable or dryable, little things like that so it doesn't shrink up. It, get all nasty on the first washing. We have several of these types of products in the shop. If we don't have them, such as you want to try the silk, um, we can definitely order it for you and get it in. Um, like so I think that's all I wanted to say about batting today. Um, it's just a use and learn process. And I'd like you all for, thank you all for tuning in to Tips and Tricks by Be So Creative in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Have a great day. Thank you.